Everybody oh. Oh, no. And that's why I don't eat cereal. No. <laughs> you see this? <laughs> it's inside the shoestrings. <laughs> Watch this. Oh, you're so Good morning. Good morning. We are in Boston. We're about to go see the Freedom Trail. That's right. We'll find the phone. <laughs> This brick line is the Freedom Trail. There's a stripe through the city for two miles following the trail. Pretty cool, huh? Very cool. We are at Bunker Hill. We are going by the Engine 50 Boston Fire Department. This is the site of the longest serving firehouse inside the city limits of Boston. We are here at the Charlestown Naval Shipyard. This is where the USS Constitution is. There's a visitor center, a museum, and you can actually take a tour of the USS Constitution. Right here in front of us is a dry dock, so we are learning about that. The USS Constitution Museum is full of fascinating and interactive exhibits. If you have kids, plan a long visit here. We spent quite a bit of time in here and we had no kids. We were just kids at heart, I guess. <laughs> That's crazy. You would think that the heaviest one would not be the one you built boats out of. Yes. <laughs> the USS Constitution is also known as Old Ironside. It has never been defeated. There are copper bolts and fastenings on the ship that were made by Paul Revere. The ship overall is 305 feet long and weighs just under 2,000 tons. Originally, it had a crew of 450 sailors and marines. An old Ironside is equipped to carry over 50 guns, including 30 cannons. Being short pays off sometimes. Yeah. This has already been so exciting to see all these historical sites. I can't wait to see the rest of them. But we've already walked a lot. Holy moly. And we're getting kind of hungry. So we are going to take a break for lunch at Regina's Pizza. Cops Hill Burying Ground is up there. We're going there. I think that's our first stop after lunch. Okay, back up the hill. Which one do you like? Regina's pizza was awesome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I ate the extra piece. Me too. <laughs> 
we had the cheese pizza. I rated it a 9.6. What's your rating, Donnie? I don't know. A 9.4. 9.4 nine for Will. Hold on, I doubt I could hear you. It was dang good. It was. Now we're headed to Cops Hill. Yeah, we're hiking up the hill. <laughs> Copps Hill Burial Ground was established in 1660. That just really blows my mind. There are so many people buried here, but two of them are actually the two men believed to have held the signal lanterns in the Old North Church's bell tower to signal Paul Revere's midnight ride. Those men are John Pulley Jr., who was a merchant, and Robert Newman, who was actually the caretaker of the Old North Church. Some historians believe that the British soldiers used some of the headstones in this burial ground as target practice during the Revolutionary War. We search the graveyard for the headstone of Captain Daniel Malcolm. He was a man who smuggled wine and avoided taxes, and his headstone is one that has bullet impressions in it, and it looks so crazy. Across the street from Copps Hill Burial Ground is a spite house. This story starts with two brothers who inherited land. While one brother was off to war, the other built a large home on the land and left only a narrow strip for his brother. He assumed that the brother would have no room to build anything, but when the soldier brother returned home, he built a narrow house out of spite that blocked the sunlight and ruined his brother's view. And just down the street is the Old North Church. This is the spot where Robert Newman and John Pulling briefly hung two lanterns near the windows of the church's bell tower, which signaled Paul Revere's ride. The church was the tallest structure in Boston at the time, so they were able to give an early warning that a group of the British Army was crossing the Charles River and heading to Lexington and Concord. By the end of the next night, the American Revolutionary War had officially begun. You see what I mean? That is tall. That was way cool. This is Paul Revere's house. His house is actually the oldest residential building that is still standing in downtown Boston. Yeah, I hope it's open. I mean, Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> it's open. We just walked through Did it. Did they charge yep. you to go through it? It was uh, $6 for adults. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Now that our lunch is settled and we've kind of walked it off a little bit, we are gonna get some snacks at Modern Pastry. Oh my. Green puff, that's her favorite cannoli. And that's key Oh, that looks good. Next up on the Freedom Trail is Faneuil Hall. 
Faneuil Hall was a central marketplace for crops and livestock in downtown Boston in the 1700s. As England began trying to impose taxes on the colonies, Faneuil Hall became an important meeting place. The Sons of Liberty met here to debate issues of the day, and people still meet here today to discuss various political issues. There's roughly a thousand seats in here right now. Wow. That's what's so fascinating is this is historical, but it's also still used today. We'll say that they remodeled in the 1900s. Okay. Like 1960s, they greatly changed the look of it because you can well, see, you can see up there. all the carpet and all the stuff. Yeah. There's a funny glare on it, but you can get the idea of what it looked like before they remodeled it. Street performers have been performing at Faneuil Hall Marketplace for years and they have never left. Actually, Faneuil Hall has become one of the premier venues for street performers in the world. As Boston rapidly grew, a larger marketplace was necessary. So in 1826, Faneuil Hall expanded to include Quincy Market. This is the old state house. It was built in 1713. Until 1775, the royal governor's office was here, and he would stand on the balcony and read royal proclamations to the Bostonians. This is also the place that people heard the Declaration of Independence for the first time. Can you even imagine that? That is so crazy. This is the old corner bookstore. It was built in 1718 and it is downtown Boston's oldest commercial building. Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, Harriet Beecher Stowe, Oliver Wendell Holmes, Louisa May Alcott, Nathaniel Hawthorne, and many other authors of American classics all brought their manuscripts here to be published by Tigner and Fields Company. Today though, it's just a Chipotle. We just walked past a random plaque on the sidewalk that said site of the first public school. We finished off the Freedom Trail by seeing King's Chapel Burying Ground and Granary Burying Ground. These burial grounds just blow my mind. I mean, think about how long these people and these headstones have been here. I don't think I have ever looked at a piece of rock that was engraved on in the 1600s. Now we are walking through Boston Commons and the Public Gardens. We are about to ride the swan boats. Somehow, after all the food we've eaten today, I'm still hungry. I'm sure it's the walking, but... We do have almost six miles in. I feel very hungry. We are at Beacon Hill now. We wanted to see Acorn Street. It is beautiful over here. It feels so homey and cozy. I can't even imagine how nice it must feel in the fall. We talked to some really nice people who live here and they gave us a few recommendations for dinner. So we are going to go find one of those restaurants and sit down and kind of process how much we've seen today because it's been so much and so fun. That looks 
looks good. That's a huge meal. We pretty much demolished the food. All we need is get up. Will and Donnie wanted to catch another baseball game, so they are headed back to Fenway Park, and Mom, Dad, and I decided to hit up Mike's Pastry for more cannolis before we head back to the apartment. We're not really starving now, but we thought we could sample some cannolis when we get back and maybe have some left over for breakfast in the morning before we head out of Boston for the next part of the trip. garden. He means garden. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Carrots, cherry red tomatoes, super sweet red tomatoes, hybrid tomatoes, lemon boy hybrid tomatoes, <laughs> cucumber, It is 8.30 and we are just getting back to our Airbnb. It has been a full day. What was your favorite Freedom Trail? I really liked the Old North Church. Yeah, that was really cool. Faneuil Hall was pretty cool too. Mm -hmm. so what was your favorite spot on the Freedom Trail, Dad? The Paul Revere Church. Yeah. It was was pretty that cool. That was really cool. I mean, to see the benches that folks sit in. The boxes were yeah, interesting. The boxes. <clears throat> you know, we give ties every week, but they, same concept, but they basically purchased their box mm -hmm. and they could decorate it, had coat, little coat mm -hmm. racks and make yeah, it how you want it. Exactly. Your home at church. Exactly. I thought that was pretty <laughs> fascinating yeah and then like the statue of George Washington and uh -huh. the fact that Lafayette stood there you know and, mm -hmm. and made comments about the statue mm -hmm. you know and the same one that we're standing there looking at too it's like wow yeah. <clears throat> a lot of times you see replicas or whatever but mm -hmm. it's like this is one of the few <laughs> remaining you know structures yeah I mean his home was just fascinating Paul Revere's house and then the cemeteries and the fact that those stones <laughs> as far as I can tell are original like from the early 1600s yeah, like granite uh, marble you know mm. weathered but still still there you can make out some of the words yes from the <laughs> 1600s yeah it's crazy almost 400 years ago I mean, I think the Freedom Trail was cool and pretty well thought out. You don't have to chase maps and everything. Mm -hmm. You can walk the trail. There's signs you know, that there's point. There's signs that point, and then you can just immerse yourself in mm -hmm. the history of um, all the stuff. Yep. I'm about to try cannoli now. I like the garden, too. Going... The public garden? Oh, yeah, the public garden was really But I know neat. that's not the Freedom Trail. Well, there's a lot of neat things. <laughs> yes, on and on. Yeah. I would say so far Boston has exceeded my expectations. Me too. Of, like coolness. I just kind of expected city. Yeah. With history because we've, right. we've seen historical things before. So I just kind of expected it to be similar. But it's completely different. That looks so good. This is the Florentine. I don't really know what it is. The shell is different. And I don't It was really the top rated one actually. Know what it is, but it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. It's really good. 